Hi, this is Bob Brown and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is just a brief uh, video. Um, I've been reading some of the Salon Magazine articles and uh, just in general, uh, this is kind of a warning to millennials and activists um, in general. Do not be lured by the siren song of socialism and communism. Uh, dem democracy and capitalism are both very flawed systems and they have a lot of problems. But to date, they're the best two systems we have to have freedom and to expand uh, knowledge and expand uh, financial stability for the vast majority of people. There are many problems with both of them. They're not perfect, uh, but, but compare, in comparison to the Soviet Union and the history of communism, believe me, democracy and capitalism shine, outshine them all. Now there are problems within there are structural problems appearing within both, and I think the that people now see that what's happening they're trying to shake up this this grip that people have put on the system. But just perusing the salon articles, they tend to show that they tend to have a glowing feeling that communism is a great option. The Cold War, if you check the facts, the Cold War ended up killing almost fifty million people more than the First World War and the Second World War combined. We don't need a new Cold War. We do not need a new Cold War within or without the United States. Um, capitalism works. It doesn't work for everyone. There are people who it will not work forever, and, but, but for the majority of people it does work. So don't be lured by, into these philosophies of reading Karl Marx and Engels and the Communist Manifesto. <clears throat> it doesn't work. You can look at example after example from the Cambodia genocide to, to the, the collapse of the Soviet Union to the repression in China to you know every state that has, has adopted communism has ultimately failed. But they'll try to lure you into it, especially young people. <clears throat> Read the history, see what people said. Read Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn is the author of the Gulag Archipelago, amongst others. And if you read Solzhenitsyn, you'll see what really uh, communism is. And that's why I'm totally opposed to Guantanamo Bay, because Guantanamo Bay is the United States' is Cuban archipelago, just like the Soviets' archipelago that Solzhenitsyn warns us about. Rule of law is rule of law. There has to be rule of law. If there's not rule of law, there's nothing. And so, at this point, I would, I would urge you to read the works of Alexander Solzhenitsyn before you, and then read Karl Marx if you want. But once you read Karl Marx and Alexander Solzhenitsyn, you will see very clearly that, that it doesn't work out. I want to do a, a longer video comparing the, new, the movies that I don't watch, but I've seen. And, uh, but it, it's basically the movies called The Purge. My opinion, they're based on the old Star Trek episode, Return of the Archons. And in the Return of the Archons, and, the, and then in the William Shatner, uh, Leonard Nimoy version of the Return of the Archons, which I think the Purge really is copied off or from, the Enterprise lands on a planet, and everybody's walking around in a trance. Everything's peaceful, everything's clean, everything's orderly, everyone's got this smile, and they, they talk very robotically, and, they're, and everyone's happy. And then all of a sudden, I think it's at 6 p.m., the red hour strikes, just like in the movie The Purge, where it's, it's like the old Freudian model of the superego, ego, and id. The id is allowed to be unleashed. Now, in the 1960s sanitized version of Star Trek Return of the Archons, there's basically people running around and burning things. The Purge, I haven't seen the Purge movies. I don't know if I really want to, but I'm sure that it's going to be pretty bad. But it's the same concept, that... Communism on its, it, and the reason I bring these up is that communism is like that. When you read Karl Marx and you're sitting in a coffee shop, uh, it looks like a great idea. That's the, when the Enterprise crew lands before the Red Hour, but after the Red Hour, that's what communism turns into. And it almost always turns into the Red Hour or the Purge. They had a, Stalin had purged, he, I don't, he killed 35 million 
um, Ukrainians through starvation and crazy agricultural pro pro uh, programs. Mao had his purge. Uh, the Cambodian genocide under Pol Pot, they had their purge. You know, everyone's lavishing praise over Fidel Castro, not me. No Fidel Castro praise for me. That guy could have caused a world war. He negotiated with the Soviets to bring missiles into Cuba, and the United States could not have nuclear missiles from so the Soviet Union 90 miles off Miami, and that was the, you know, the missiles of October crisis of John F. Kennedy. And so, so if you ever see the episode Return of the Archons, or you see the Purge movies, you'll see what I'm talking about. It, it, it looks like a great idea, but in practice it never is. It, it turns into these genocide catastrophes. And the Soviet Union, you know, was, was terrible to its people. It may have been, it, it, you know, they killed the Tsar's family. They purged Russia. You know, everyone who didn't obey them were purged. Then Stalin came in, and he was worse. He killed more of his people than anything, any other leader in Russian history that I know of. <clears throat> it's case after case. So they're, they're trotting this out again because people have short memories and, and you know, people find, oh, I found this book, The Communist Manifesto. This is a great idea. It's a horrible idea. All you got to do is you, you, you see the ideal and the shadow. This is what T.S. Eliot causes, you know, between the ideal and the real falls the shadow. That's from T.S. Eliot. From the, between the ideal and the real falls the shadow. And that's the shadow of communism. When you read the ideal... It seems like a great idea, but when you see the real and you see example after example of human misery that that um, quasi-religious, it's atheistic, I understand, but it's a religion in its own way, that quasi-religious, uh, atheistic um, philosophy of total intolerance other than the, the party and state line, you will see the deadliness of it. In, in, the, in the marketplace of ideas, everyone should have a voice. Everyone has the right to be right, and everyone has the right to be wrong, and everyone has the right to agree, and everyone has the right to disagree. That's what works. And people will agree, generally speaking, with ideas that benefit them. That's just how human nature works. But when the state tries to enforce its rules on everybody, then that's... That's when it's a totalitarian state and it, it's disastrous. So I urge people and millennials that are, do not fall prey to the siren song of communism. Do not fall prey to the siren song of socialism. You know, you're, you're, you're assuming that a small group of people, a small cadre, that somehow they have more knowledge than all the rest of us put together. They don't. <clears throat> this is why YouTube is great. You can put your ideas out here. People can agree with you. They can disagree with you. But we have the freedom to do that. In a communist system, you ultimately will not have that freedom. It will not exist. And if you don't believe me, look at China. They don't have this right. You know, a lot of YouTube is blocked. Google is blocked in China. They have to use proxy firewalls to get out to find things. So you don't have, you don't have to take my word for it. You can look at China or you can travel, you know, maybe not Shanghai per se, but if you go into China and you try to go on the internet, you'll see how fast they have no freedom. And that's a totalitarian state at work. And communism will always turn, it, and every example that it's been implemented in the 20th century, it always turned to a totalitarian state. So do not, you know, you make up your own mind, read it, look at the history, and you'll see that this is a siren song that leads nowhere but to destruction. And... In my opinion, a lot of these mass movements we're seeing amongst millennials, these agents or provocateurs of this type of uh, philosophy, they're trying to invade this as well. And I would, I would say, keep it, you know, know your own mind, as Socrates said, to thine own self be true, but do not fall prey to it because you need to read about it and read the history of what these people have done. And my last point is, if they say, well, yeah, that was Pol Pot and that was Chairman Mao and that was Stalin... And that was this, and that, you know, that was, you know, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela who left his country in total shambles, you know, and just an economic disaster. And, you know, but, but we'll get it right this time. I'm telling you, they won't. <laughs> it's not in human nature. Human nature is essentially selfish in its own way. Now, 
you can be an enlightened, like the Dalai Lama says, you can be an enlightened selfish. An enlightened selfish person says, hey, I'm doing pretty good. I should help others so they could do good so we don't have a bad society. Communism is the other way. Communism says human nature is essentially selfish, and we're going to make sure that we drive the selfishness out of human nature. In the marketplace of ideas and the marketplace of, that we have in the United States and the West, people will always think of themselves first. That's human nature. But through, as the Dalai Lama calls it, enlightened selfishness or enlightened self-interest, an enlightened self-interest person realizes, I want the world around me to be good, not just me, because if I can't venture out without three bodyguards, what's the point? So in the Dalai Lama's terms, the enlightened self-interest person realizes, hey, I, I'm doing okay, but I need to also give back and help others. That's why we have charities, and that works. Forcing people to give to charities is a wrong plan. You have to show people that, that it's in their own self-interest. You know, it could be, it could, they could feel good about themselves to give and things of that sort. So it's been Bob Brown. Thank you for watching my, my YouTube video. And remember, keep studying.